To understand how the DSM works, the easiest way is to think of it as a very large-scale multiband compressor, with a large number of frequency bands distributed throughout the whole spectrum. Each band has its own fully featured compressor, which operates on the signal independently of the other bands. This means that compression can occur in a specific frequency range without affecting the level of other parts of the program. Crucial to this is the capture function, which analyzes the levels of the music in each band and sets the thresholds to match the spectrum of the program itself. With this simple button press, the DSM acquires the underlying spectrum of the program and is immediately primed with the music it's working with. The capture spectrum is displayed by this yellow line on the graph. This is the threshold for compression across the entire frequency range. The red line displays the live activity of the music in real time, following the level and frequency content as it's played out. If any part of the program activity in the red line gets higher than the capture spectrum, compression can occur in that region of the program. So if we do a capture of the music with a threshold slider set at zero and the red line closely follows the yellow capture spectrum, and in this example, with a ratio set at 100 to 1, anywhere it crosses the threshold line, the program gets limited by the captured spectrum itself. So for instance, if there are significant events anywhere in the spectrum, a loud bit, a drum slam, a blast of essing or whatever, the DSM will return these to the levels and response of the capture, leaving the rest unchanged. And since this capture is a valid representation of the track itself, the sound of the events would still be a viable part of the overall sound of the track. Looking at the graph, we can see this happening now. Imagine just how much more powerful this is than existing multiband compressors and DSs. But just for fun, and to illustrate how powerful this really is, I will do something completely absurd and add a massive 40 decibel boost in the program at around 8 kilohertz. Of course, it sounds absolutely terrible. Then I'm going to let the DSM undo the damage so you can see how it copes with this. It's difficult to imagine any vocal track getting worse than this. Try that with any other compressor or DSM. All the other controls in the dynamic section operate exactly like conventional compressors. So for instance, if we reduce the threshold to minus 24, we can move the capture spectrum line down and force 20 decibels of compression to happen. And we can make up the loss with a gain slider, just like in any conventional compressor. So we are now hearing 24 decibels of very heavy compression at 100 to 1 ratio. And since the program line is permanently above the yellow threshold line, the output of the DSM is being limited entirely to the sound of the capture spectrum. Now 24 decibels of limiting is drastic by anybody's standards. But this is useful to judge the quality of the DSM and the accuracy of the capture spectrum. The thing to note here is that even under these conditions, it produces a viable and credible version of the original program, free from pumping and other artifacts. In fact, it's almost difficult to hear that any compression is actually going on. This is because the DSM is limiting to a real spectrum taken from the actual program. I will switch the DSM in and out so you can compare the results with the original track. Okay, I will demonstrate some quick loudness maximization. 
Since the DSM is now putting the whole track out at normalized levels without the artifacts we would normally expect, I can now increase the levels by raising the threshold a bit and switch on the limiter to handle the peaks. I will leave you with this comparison for a while. Okay, now I'm going to be really unkind and put the 40 decibel EQ bump back into the track to show how the DSM deals with this when maximizing levels. Now, this really is the track from hell. Hopefully no mastering engineer will ever have to suffer anything as bad as this. But as you can see, the DSM tames even this, and largely puts it all back to the sound of the original track, and continues to maximise it as well. Now, if you didn't want the level compression of the DSM, but wanted to keep the response correction, for instance if you wanted to use another favourite compressor, you can suspend the compression by simply hitting the freeze gains button. The response and gain to DSM will be frozen at that point, and all dynamic compression will stop. It's acting like a complex equaliser that's undoing the awful response of the track. So now you are free to use another favourite compressor, working on a nicely corrected track. Okay, so now you could be saying that the DSM can only do all this because it has a capture of the original track. What happens if we don't have a capture of this track in the first place? Well, if you are a mastering engineer, faced with a track from hell, with no prior reference, you can simply apply a spectrum from something similar and carry on from there. I will get one from the included setup list to demonstrate this. I've chosen this rock tune setting because it was captured from something quite similar. Okay, well that's not too bad, but it lacks a bit of top end and sounds a bit harsh in the upper mid ranges. So I'll use the parametric EQ threshold controls to adjust the spectrum just a bit. I'll put a slight dip at around 4 kHz and raise the top around 14 kHz. That's better. So there we go. The track from Hell is not sounding too bad now. Of course, I've used these extreme examples so that you can hear them on low quality video. Obviously, under real conditions, very much more subtle work would normally be the order of the day. However, I hope I've given a taste of what the DSM can do and illustrate that it is much more than just another conventional compressor plugin. Thank you for your time.
Bigger than that